morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you for the invitation to this session. And we are getting to a completely different environment comparing the Netherlands. And I would like to go through the Czech case. At first, those who know me, I'm always complaining about the Czech legislation, so I start again with this topic. So, uh, the research priorities uh, are not in the Czech legislation mentioned, um, maybe in a few, few sentences. Uh, the old uh, uh, State Landmark Conservation Act was uh, created in the late 80s and still it's, uh, it's working or not working well and there were about nine, at this moment, nine attempts to change it to bring, to introduce some other law. So still, every, uh, the most of the heritage care is uh, organized by all communist law in a market economy more than 20, uh, more than nearly 30 years in the market economy environment. So it looks quite strange. The second law I want to mention is a law on the special uh, act on the special planning and building regulation, where uh, the most important parts of Valletta uh, <coughs> conventions are um, incorporated. Especially for the special planning, there is a written that uh, uh, there must be some uh, all the projects, all the special plans must uh, avoid of the destruction of archaeological. Uh, monuments, archaeological heritage. But in reality, it's a kind of a mantra in each project. This project won't violate any way archaeological remains, even the highway or the, the, the road goes across protected place. So it's not used properly. So in the reality, no national research framework exists now. So, and I could, st I could finish my presentation at this moment. <laughs> or the, the other option is to show you how the Czech art coaches are dealing with this situation. Uh, there are only uh, requirements uh, to have a research design for scientific excavation. So it's about 20 excavations a year. On the other hand, uh, there is... Uh, about this moment, about 15,000 of uh, monitored construction, or the, about 1,000 of the real excavation in the country. So it's just a piece of, piece of sand on the desert. What is protected in the Czech Republic? Uh, I start at the, at the lowest point of the pyramid. Uh, the Czech law uh, talks about this, there is the act uh, on, uh, on heritage. Uh, protection talks about the era with the potential of archaeological finds. It's one of good points in this law, and it's about it's nearly the whole Czech Republic, excluding the large uh, coal mines, uh, uh, already excavated areas, and so on. So nearly everyone is uh, obligated in case of construction to send an announcement to the Institute of Archaeology, and we receive in the institute about 50,000 of these announcements a year now. So it's very good net that's covering about 17% of all construction in the country. That's the positive moment. But this area with potential archaeological finds and also the archaeological sites doesn't have any other special protection. So that means that in case of any development research, uh, the only question is how long, how much, how long does it take the research, and how much the developer will pay. Uh, only special group of a cultural monuments. We can uh, I can say that we have uh, three levels: the UNESCO sites, national cultural monuments, and the cultural monuments. But this structure is also it was built in the seven in the sixties and the seventies of the last century, most of them. And you can see that it's very unbalanced, uh, distributed these uh, these um, cultural monuments. I can't say that this part of the Czech Republic, the region called Norvegia or Silesia, is without archaeological finds. But the more, more active colleagues were in Bohemia, so that's why we have. <laughs> 
uh, we have uh, 12, 1200 protected sites. Uh, at this moment, uh, it's very complicated to add any site to the list, and usually it's about two, three sites a year. So to improve the situation, it could take a very long time. Uh, who is responsible? Who is responsible in the decision making? At the top is, of course, the Ministry of Culture. And the decisions concerning the uh, protected places are made by the regional administration. Uh, yes, you, you, you've been talking about the Spanish uh, case or German case, whereas for each, uh, each part, different legislation. We have one legislation for the whole country, but in 14 regions we have 14 different practices. Maybe, maybe you know it's uh, uh, from other countries as well. Uh, National Heritage Institute, it's an organization founded by the Ministry of Culture, takes care only of the protected monuments. So they, they give advice, uh, they, 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 it's working like, like an advisory board for the decision of the regional administration. But the decision making is on the regional level and you can appeal up the, to the Minister of Culture when someone does not agree. The Institute of Archaeology and the Academy of Sciences has a really different position. It should control the quality, the scientific quality of the research. And uh, we are also a place where all the excavation reports are um, archived. Uh, actually, uh, the control of scientific quality, scientific quality we can do from the excavation report. So it's very hard to control what's happening during the excavations. So uh, we see how it went in the terrain three years after the end of the excavations. So it's a little bit problem, it's like for the, uh, for the doctor to say the, the patient died after the funeral. And who has the biggest responsibility and also the power are the licensed organizations because the most because the uh, the licensed organizations uh, has to uh, they are obliged to have a bilateral agreement with the developer and what will happen in the terrain is based on this bilateral agreement so the, the using uh, the use of the methods or the applied methods for the research. Uh, the costs, the time, it's not a matter of the state decision. That's, that's, that's a little bit strange. And it comes from the communist law. It looks very liberal way. And it's necessary to say the licensed organization has to employ at least one person with an MA degree and uh, practice uh, experience in archaeology at least two years. So that's the the qualification of these organizations. They got the license for one moment, and then they can, some of them they have to renew in a two, three, five years. Some of them they have uh, no limits of their, of their license. That's also very, um, very different. And we have 110 of these uh, organizations. These organizations are mostly organized by the regional governments. It's about 60, 70 percent. There are, some free, uh, there are some state organizations, as the universities, institutes, uh, institutes of the Academy of Sciences, and uh, we have also about 15% private organizations. They, they do it for profit. Uh, what what, did, what, what uh, uh, means this situation? Uh, the state does not require any research frameworks, any, any system of decision making, but uh, also for the, for the archaeological community, it's a very complicated to live in this, this system. So many tools were developed by the community and they are accepted by, um, the, uh, it's, it's not obligatory to accept these, uh, these requirements. So in uh, 2012, uh, rules, uh, sorry, 2010, I thought this was in the presentation. The rules of archaeological excavation was uh, produced by the Archaeological Institute and other organizations. It's some, something like the Ethic Codex, non-moral Ethic Codex, 
what to do, not to leave half of the skeletons in the, in the trench and things like this. So it's very simple, the human having about, about 12, 12 pages, so it's very short. And sometimes the developers requires to keep this rules of archaeological research and it's part of the agreement, the military agreement. That, that happens. Also, also the developers want to find any, any organization, any system in a, in a, in a uh, rescue excavation. And in regional practice, that's an example of Prague, then I have uh, some general example of the whole country. Uh, the um, national, uh, sorry, the name, yeah, <laughs> the National Heritage Institute produced a map of important archaeological events in a Prague reservation. Uh, they produced a map, and the, in, the, in the map they marked places where the archaeological events are still not damaged and they have very high potential. But they are belonging, if you remember the pyramids, to the lowest level. It's only placed with archaeological finds, nothing else. But this is accessible for the developers, and it says, if you want to build in this place, underground garage, that could be a problem. That will cost a lot of money. You will, you will, you will need some, uh, it, it will be very complicated in time. So that's the only, way, only one way how to, um, how to inform the the developers and uh, to say that try to find any other plot. One minute, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, other one is uh, the central archaeological map of the Czech Republic. It's a central evidence of archaeological excavations and also it's used only on voluntary base. And I would like to show just two examples. One example is a highway. To the most densely settled region in, Pro, uh, in the Czech Republic, uh, one of the largest excavations. But at the beginning, there were no plans, no decisions what, which way the highway should go. Uh, the company, the state company, came to the archives at the moment when they wanted to make a tender. So also the analysis of the, uh, of, of, the, of the potential was prepared for the, for the cost. And the geophysics was done just one month before the start of the excavation, just to know where to move the top topsoil. Other example, that was a decision of the developer, Jewish cemetery that was discovered on a not expected place, and the developer decided to uh, preserve the cemetery in a very strange way, as a box inside of underground garage in the second floor. So it's big box of concrete. But this decision was made only because of pressure of the Jewish community, of course, mm -hmm. pressure of the National Heritage Institute, and uh, the developer now uh, asked the state for the compensation. So the process is started three years ago, it's not finished yet. Uh, to the conclusions. Uh, I think these conclusions are nothing, nothing positive to learn, but uh, I just mentioned because this time is short, just one. Uh, the different practices in regions, unclear groups, undermines reputation of archaeology in public. That I wanted to mention. What does it mean when the framework or the rules are nearly unknown and always are created ad hoc for the special particle project, particle construction? So, this is, in my, in my opinion, very important point that has to be. Uh, included to the discussion. Thank you.